Hi everyone, it's Lynn, Low Carb Traveler, and it's been an incredibly long week. I have to tell you, my work schedule has been absolutely insane this week. So I feel like um, we've had some great conversations and discussions, but I just kind of wanted to have a little bit more of a personal conversation with you guys. And I hope you know that you can ask me anything. And if you're concerned about asking it publicly because you're afraid you'll get judged or you're not sure if it's a taboo topic or it's too personal, you can feel free to message me. I don't mind. Um, anyway, so I had an interesting message from Instagram this week that I thought I would share with you guys um, because I think it's a hot topic and maybe one you're curious about as well. And uh, another thing too, like I haven't shared my food diaries that much lately because they haven't been very interesting. And there's a reason for that. And I'm doing some testing right now um, to try to determine exactly what's going on, you know, with my health. And so, but the testing, like the results are inconclusive. And so I'm doing some more testing before I really share much about that. But just to give you a, uh, like a quick glance at what I had to eat today, I had um, this morning I had coffee with MCT oil in it, and I had two full tablespoons of MCT oil, which it, for me is like a meal replacement. It holds me over for hours. It gives me really good energy, which is good when my work schedule is crazy. And um, then I had eggs, and I knew that my schedule was nuts. I had an interview today. Actually, oh, I'm so excited to tell you guys about this. So I was a featured speaker for the Kick Sugar Summit which has not happened yet, um, but I went ahead and recorded my interview for the summit today, and that's why I had to get dressed. <laughs> so anyway, it's called the Kick Sugar Summit, but I have, I think I have a special link for you for that. So if you'll just, if you're interested in signing up, it's going to be free. I'll have a link where you can sign up for free. So if you um, just leave a comment and say Kick Sugar Summit, I'll come back and make sure and give you the link for that. Anyway, I'm super excited about that. There are some amazing um, doctors and scientists and, and really cool people speaking on metabolic health and the ketogenic diet and stuff you're going to love. Um, anyway, so that's just a bit about my crazy schedule. I knew I was going to have a full schedule. I also had a consulting session tonight. Um, if you read my latest blog post, you know that I've been in business a little over 23 years. It was 23 years in February, and I am a small uh, small business and marketing consultant. So some of my clients still have day jobs, so I do some evening consulting sometimes. So it was a really long day. That leads into why I had what I ate today. So anyway, this afternoon, in between the interview for the Kick Sugar Summit and my next consulting client, I just had a little bit of time and some other work to do. So what I did was I made five eggs with cheese, and it was about 3.1 ounces of Colby Jack cheese plus a tablespoon of butter. So it was a good amount of food. Um, anyway, I made five eggs and I can't eat five eggs in one sitting. I just don't have that kind of appetite anymore, but I specifically made enough because I thought I'll eat half now and then I'll warm them up later. I know warmed up scrambled eggs doesn't sound that great, but my schedule's full and it's busy and I just have to do whatever it takes, right? Um, anyway, I'm glad you guys are, are joining in live here. We'll have a good discussion. I just wanted to have kind of a fun little you know, casual chat with you, but getting back to what I ate today. So I had a coffee with MCT oil in it, held me over forever, um, gave me good energy, made my stomach feel better too. My stomach is hurting and I don't, I haven't talked about this publicly, but I don't mind to share a little bit with you guys. Anyway, um, so I had the coffee, then I made five eggs. I ate most of them, maybe three eggs while I had time got done with my consulting session, which went over, and then I finished the other two eggs, what was left over of that. And also had some pecans, just some raw pecan halves. Like, I had measured out 30 grams of pecans, but I haven't finished them all yet. Just like maybe 15 grams of pecans. Because I'm a stickler for tracking, so yes, I weighed them. <laughs> and so that's what I've had to eat so far today. And um, so I haven't been publishing my food diaries because that's kind of boring. I mean, I'm having a lot of the same things on repeat. However, one of the things I'm testing, and the reason I'm not sharing my food diaries daily right now is because I'm doing a lot of testing. Um, one of the things I'm testing is mixing things up. So um, different types of calories. So there's this whole like school of thought, like calories matter, calories don't matter, right? 
but I'm doing some interesting research. You guys know what a science geek I am, right? And I'm doing some interesting research on the different types of calories. Calories um, burned versus calories stored. And there are, like, it's, it's not just a matter of the number. It's very much like the number on your scale, which sometimes we love and sometimes we don't love. But it's not giving you a full picture. That number on the scale is not really giving you a full picture. What it's, it's just telling you basically, you know, the gravity of your body because there's so much more going on in your body composition at any given time. It could be inflammation, bloating, muscle gain, bone um, mass, you know, it could be lots of different things, right? <clears throat> body fat, visceral fat, visceral fat obviously being more dangerous. So um, calories are the same way. It's like, it's a full... Um, like to you, there's just the one number, like how many calories you ate. But let's say, for example, the difference between, I'm just going to grab like two random things here. Um, I have so much random things here, but I'm just going to grab the first two things right here. One of these I love and one of these I don't. Can you guess which one is which? <laughs> the calories in this versus the calories in this are not the same in terms of how your body interprets them and uses those calories. So I'm doing a lot of interesting research on that right now, and I, that might just bore you to tears. But basically, I was going to tell you what I'm eating today. And also wanted to share with you this interesting question I got on Instagram. And we can go back to this in a minute if you like, because I said something wrong, and I need to take it back and correct myself about Kiss My Keto. I don't like their bars. And I've said that repeatedly over and over. However, some people love them. Have any of you tried Kiss My Keto? They came in two different keto crates, these. So I will tell you right off the bat, they got rave reviews on Instagram when they were featured in Keto Crate. People loved them and um, I didn't. I don't like them. Aaron doesn't like them. For a change, it was something we both didn't like. I finished my bars because when, when I, we did the um, taste testing review of three different flavors, I finished mine because I wanted to uh, blood glucose and blood ketone test them. I wanted to know if they would spike blood sugar or knock me out of ketosis because they have an ingredient in them that's iffy for me. Personally, I have an ingredient intolerance. Um, Aaron refused to finish his. <laughs> like, he's like, that's an edible. No. <laughs> and we have jokes about like the things we would eat if we were starving to death, like on a deserted island starving to death. You know, because like I'm like, what would it take for you to eat a Happy Meal? <sighs> he's like, I'd have to be starving. But if I was just hungry, I'd just go hungry. <laughs> but he wouldn't even finish these. And so that really surprised me. Um, a lot of people loved them. We didn't like them. I'm not trying to do a review here. I'm just saying um, we can get back to that in a second because I said the only thing I like from Kiss My Keto is their MCT oil and it is very good quality and it is the best price. However, I wasn't 100% accurate on that. <clears throat> I think in other places I said it right. But also, what is good is their chocolate. Not their bars, but their, and I thought these were candies. Like, if you look at the box, doesn't it look like candy pieces? I thought it was candy. Like, little toasted hazelnut. I thought it was chocolate-covered hazelnuts. It's not. It's bars. You know, like chocolate bars. They're obviously good. <laughs> Uh, if someone's this though, the reason I don't recommend them and, and because they're amazingly delicious is because they're expensive. So this two boxes of these, they're like 25 bucks a box for four bars. So that comes out to over $6 a bar. This is $50 worth of chocolate, you guys. And that's why I didn't recommend them because I didn't feel like they were cost effective. However, they are amazing. I have three left that I had to hide from Aaron, and I'm rationing those. But I meant to say, like I didn't want to, I didn't want to be contradicting myself. What was I going to tell you guys? Oh, okay. So the calories, that's what we were talking about that got me sidetracked on Kiss My Keto. Their chocolate candy bars, not their bars, like snack bars. I don't like those. But their chocolate candy is delicious. It's just expensive. So you want to catch that on sale. But exciting news. I just won a $50 gift card to Kiss My Keto. 
like I'm all about the savings, the discounts, the sales, and winning stuff. <laughs> I think people who say, I never win anything, I ask them, do you ever enter anything? <laughs> um, anyways, and so I'm going to tell you what, because I already have their MCT oil, already ordered that, so I will be using that gift card to get more of that expensive chocolate. Anyway, I wanted to share this message with you because um, that somebody sent me because I think it's important. <clears throat> and you might be curious about the same thing. So I told you what I ate today. You know I eat pretty simple, right? So I'll repeat it. I had two tablespoons of MCT oil. It was actually not this brand. It was a different one, which I found out they're sister companies. I can tell you about that. But it was, I had two tablespoons of MCT oil, five eggs with 3.1 ounces of Colby Jack cheese off the block, one tablespoon of butter, so scrambled eggs with cheese, lots of them. I made two meals out of that, and then I had 30 grams of pecans. That's all I've had today. I might have a snack before I go to bed. Oh, wait. I'm telling a fib. I had a bar this morning <laughs> that I forgot about. Yes, I did. And it was salted caramel. Hang on a second. So this is important. Because I forgot this, but it is in my fitness pal because I am a logging, tracking junkie. I track everything. It was salted caramel bar. So we'll go back to those in a second because we could talk about that calorie thing that I don't want to talk about publicly yet. We can also talk about my gut health issues that I don't want to talk about publicly yet. I'm doing a lot of testing behind the scenes, um, and I'm not ready to disclose all the results until I know for sure what's what and, and what's really impacting or affecting what. And also until I know exactly what's going on with me. So that's going to be an interesting conversation because I'm doing a microbiome test, a home test, and uh, also going to see a uh, gastrointestinal specialist, I think. So I guess I should just go ahead and tell you but while we're on that topic because I get spastic and I'll forget. <laughs> Back in February, I got the flu. I don't know how many of you remember that. I got sick on my flight home from Long Beach, California. So, you know, I went out to LA, went to the Metabolic Health Summit, had a great time. I got on my flight home in LA. Um, there were people all the way around me on a five-hour flight coughing their heads off. And I was like, I can't not breathe for the next five hours. So I came home insanely sick. It was a really bad flu. And then I got another flu a few weeks later in March. And I ended up on antibiotics and steroids twice in a row. And it just ruined my gut flora. Like, And so that's one of the things about antibiotics um, is that it will kill all the bacteria in your stomach, even the good bacteria. So it can take a little while to recover. So that's what I've been dealing with. And that's what prompted me to start testing the MCT oil because it specifically um, like um, helps with digestive issues, it um, helps with infl inflammation in the, in the digestive tract and all that kind of stuff. That's what got that on a kick. Anyway, let me get to this question. <clears throat> so now you know why I'm in testing mode and you know all that kind of stuff. One of the things that's really bothering me lately, ever since the antibiotics messed up my stomach, is vegetables. And I love vegetables. Y'all know I like my roasted broccoli, my roasted veggies, and all that kind of stuff. But lately, I can eat half a serving of green beans or half a serving of broccoli, and I am literally just in pain for 24 hours. It is the worst kind of pain, like as if I ate four servings of broccoli kind of pain, but even worse. <clears throat> and um, so it seems to be my trigger, and I like vegetables. Um, so it's something that, like I said, I'm, I'm really looking into, but getting back to this question that I was asked on Instagram. So, um, the question came from someone named Brad and Brad said, I haven't noticed you mentioning much about organic versus normal food. I love the word normal. <laughs> um, I haven't mentioned you, I haven't noticed you mentioning much about organic versus normal food. Do you care about the type of eggs? Do you think it really matters? I often wonder whether I'm wasting my money. I love the simple way that you eat. So let me ask you guys, like grass-fed beef versus regular beef, um, organic versus regular, um, do you shop deals and sales or do you try to, 
you know, always have like organic, farm fresh, you know, that kind of thing. I'm curious what your take is on this. And I'm, um, I, here was my answer and I was, it was a direct message, a private message. So I was very candid and I'm just going to share it directly with you guys. Um, my answer was I buy higher quality when I can. Number one, when it's available, I live in an extremely small rural community, an agricultural town. Um, and there's not a lot of stores here. It's a two hour round trip for me to go to any kind of like whole foods or any major store really. Um, but I said, I buy higher quality when I can, but I'm not so sure it really is. And I'm being honest, like I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure there's a huge difference. Um, so between I, this is what I said. Between the soil and the rain and the air, I figure everything is at least somewhat polluted at this point. I try to keep it real, I try to keep it affordable, and I try to keep it easy. And uh, I talked about that, of course, in a little bit in my latest blog post, um, where I shared a little bit about my busy lifestyle and, you know, eating on the go and keeping it really simple. And um, I eat a lot of plain foods, mono meals, you know, really simple stuff or whatever. Um, but do I worry or think too much about that? I don't because even like, let's say with Kerrygold butter, that's like grass fed cows, right? The Kerrygold butter, they're currently under a class action suit for that because their cows are not just grass fed. No, no cows are 100% grass fed, but they charge or command a premium price for that because people assume they are 100% grass-fed cows that the butter comes from, but they're not. And so I'm not, I don't feel that confident in all the labeling and all the stickers and all the, you know, certified this or that or whatever. That's just me. I also take into consideration the planet it's coming from. <laughs> like, we've done a number on this planet, you guys. And so <clears throat> I don't know. That you could go, you could say, oh, all, you know, all meat is polluted and go vegetarian. But honestly, I mean, the vegetables are grown in the same ground. <laughs> like, whatever. Anyway, my other response was I do, though, love farm fresh eggs when I can get them because they're rich and they're way more delicious. And that's about as picky as I get. So I think that, you know, some people care more about it and I think that's okay and that's fine. But I... Like I said before, um, you know, in another thing that I did is know your why, you know, know, in, know why it matters to you. And if it truly matters to you deeply, then you stick to that for that reason. Um, Aaron does not eat beef or pork. I mentioned that in the blog post and I've asked him why I know why he chooses not to eat it. And that's totally fine. <clears throat> and um, I think everybody should eat what they want to eat, how they want to eat it, or what have you. But as for me, I try to keep it real. I try to keep it affordable. Um, I try to keep, you know, even my own meals that I share as examples, um, something anyone can do on any budget with any lifestyle. And of course, you can do better than me. You can um, do higher quality meals than me. You can cook more than I do, you know, all that kind of stuff. But somebody else... Uh, mentioned, you know, about me eating prepackaged products a lot, which I also discussed in my blog post. You know, that doesn't happen as often as you think. And I mentioned, for example, I had this bar this morning. So let me read you the ingredients of this bar, okay? Because this is packaged food, so we're going to call this processed food, okay? And I'm fine with that. Um, I had to hit the ground running. I have, I've had a very long day. I'm running on 13 hours straight of work before I, before I started this video. All right. So I don't have my glasses on, but I have them right here. Let me throw them in the floor. <laughs> oh, okay. Hang on a second. So ingredients are so small. Don't you agree? So what did you guys have to eat today? So I had eggs, um, and some pecans and this bar and some MCT oil. So let me tell you what's in this bar. Organic almond butter, soluble tapioca fiber, grass-fed collagen, caco, or ca I don't know how to pronounce that, caco butter, sunflower lectin, natural flavors, MCT oil powder, and sea salt and stevia. 
So that's not that much stuff, really. I mean, for a bar. When we're, if you compare it to like any kind of bar on the shelves, you know, at the store, like regular, like, um, I don't know, protein bars or granola bars or whatever, it really is not that much. They're nut butter, however, which I've been telling you guys, I'm addicted to these. And I really like um, F Bomb. It's been my, like, my staple. Got this little travel pack because I'm going to Austin in, in a few weeks. So that's a travel pack for that. Anyway, I like their nut butter from Perfect Keto. But check out these ingredients. Oh, it's once again, I'm very blonde. It's Kick Sugar Summit. I see you guys are leaving comments that you're interested in that event. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be virtual. So you can watch it um, from home, from anywhere, and free. So I will give you the link to that in a second. So the ingredients in their nut butter is as good as F-Bomb because it's very clean stuff. The ingredients is raw macadamia nuts, raw cashews, raw coconut butter, medium chain triglycerides from coconut oil, and their MCT profile, the MCT oil that's in their nut butter is the quality MCT oil they sell by the bottle, because I asked. <laughs> I'm like, I want to know if this is just coconut oil or if you're talking, you know, C8 or C10 or whatever. If you're not familiar with or, or you don't understand MCT oil, leave a comment and just say MCT and I'll give you my um, link where I explained it because, man, there was a lot for me to learn on that. <clears throat> anyway, it has MCT oil, vanilla bean powder, and sea salt. That's it. And it's very creamy and very rich but not sweet, right? So it doesn't have any sweetener or anything like that in it. So I ordered two jars of this because I want to bake with it. I want to make blueberry muffins with this. For sure. Um, anyway, so it's prepackaged food, yeah, but it doesn't have like a gabillion ingredients. This is just nuts and MCT oil, which is really good. Put these in the freezer. So what questions do you guys have about the MCT oil? Because you know I've been using this almost daily. I've been putting it in, I put it in my coffee, but did you see where I made candy with it? Because some people do not like oily coffee, and I get that. That's, I don't like it unless it's in a shaker bottle or a travel mug where I can keep it, you know, just give it a shake and keep it blended. But um, the interesting thing about this is I didn't realize it was different from coconut oil. I And I didn't know what the differences were or why it was different or how it worked, you know, or anything like that. Um, I'm losing weight again, which since I got sick in February, which I, you know, told you a little bit about that, I got really sick. Um, from the antibiotics and stuff. It just messed my guts up so bad. But I've had a hard time recovering from that. And um, so anyway, this has been my save and I've been using this regularly, but it also affected my weight. I started putting on weight, even though I was hardly eating because I was so sick, I was gaining weight and it wasn't, I use a body composition scale. So I wasn't gaining body fat, I was just bloated and water weight from, you know, from having all these problems with my gut and stuff. So that has, this has resolved that, which has been really cool. And I, I use these when I travel. Um, there's different ones uh, in the bottle. I use them in the bottle at home. Anyway, I was going to, oh, there's a good question. Joyce says, what's the difference between MCT oil and MCT powder? So let me grab this. Hang on a second. <clears throat> So the oil is great. This one's not cost effective. All right, so I have like tons of stuff here. We'll just hop here. I have like tons of different ones. I've been using this. Um, I mentioned this one in my NCT post. This one's too expensive. So I didn't recommend it because of cost, but it's good quality. Actually, it's the same quality as this. They are sister companies, Keto Logic, but this one's not cost effective. So I want to recommend that you don't overpay, but that you get the highest quality MCT oil or powder, right? So that's why I did the spreadsheet, the breakdown. It took me literally two weeks to sort through about 50 different brands of MCT oil and MCT powder. And a lot of like research and math to determine what was the best value. So for example, to, um, to equal the same amount of MCT oil that I would drink in my coffee, you would have to take 28 soft gels. Oh my God, they're huge. That's ridiculous. 
Like who has time to be like swallowing 28 soft gels in a day? Number one, like throughout the day, you know, when you could use the same amount of liquid or whatever. Um, anyway, so you were asking Joyce about the difference between the oil and the powder. So I mentioned that in my post that I didn't get the same effect. So I put the oil in my coffee and then I tried the powder in my coffee. This is, they're different brands, all different brands. If you're curious about what brand of whatever or anything to use, please feel free to ask me. I am working with most of these companies, but I'm still going to tell you, don't buy these. I'm still going to tell you, this is too expensive. You know, I'm still going to tell you, these are amazing, but I mean, they're like basically gold in a box, I feel like, because they're too expensive. You know, so I'm going to be honest with you if you want, if you need a good recommendation. So the difference between the oil and the powder, um, and this is a different oil, comes with a pump, which I thought was nice. It also comes in a glass bottle versus plastic. <clears throat> this was the best value. Kiss My Keto. I don't like their bars. I like their chocolate candy bars, but not their snack bars. Anyway, so this is Kiss My Keto. So I ordered this in the glass bottle because I wanted to test them all. Um, <clears throat> I like that it comes with a pump. So what's the difference? Let me just get this out of the way. This has more MCT per serving than this. So for people who don't like oil in their coffee, the powder is better. But you can also bake with it, uh, but you can do different things with the oil. So that's why I made candy with it. So what I do, if you don't want to like, you don't like fatty coffee or you don't like oily coffee, is I take this and I mix it 50-50 with peanut butter or almond butter or any kind of nut butter, doesn't matter. So, uh, but you can mix it like a three to one instead of 50-50. Like I do it one to one because I like a good dose of this. Anyway, you just don't even have to warm up the peanut butter or anything. Just mix it all together and put it in little candy molds or ice trays or whatever you have. And you want to make them small. So one tablespoon of this is three teaspoons. Three teaspoons and a tablespoon, right? Yes. All right. So let's say you take one tablespoon of this and one tablespoon of peanut butter. You're going to end up with six teaspoons. Three teaspoons of oil, right? Yes, but you can mix it, you can make it into six, see, would it be one and one? I don't know, but you can make them very small and do the math so that you're only getting a teaspoon of oil per bite. And then you put them in the freezer and they get hard and they're like little fudgesicles. I love them. I do. Like I just make little squares, but I make mine bigger. So they're one tablespoon of nut butter, one tablespoon of MCT oil. Mix it together, put it in the freezer. They pop out of the little candy mold and it is like um, like a little fudge sickle bite. That's what it tastes like to me. Just really super creamy with the nut butter and um, the oil makes it even creamier. That's the better way to take it if you don't want to drink it in your coffee. This um, So the difference between the oil and the powder is you're getting less medium chain triglycerides per serving. So where this has um, 10 grams of MCTs and they're good quality MCTs, perfect keto. Um, where this has 10 grams of MCTs per serving, which is one scoop, um, a tablespoon of the oil has 14 grams of. So there's a big difference. So the interesting thing was I tried the powder, I tried the oil. I didn't get the same instant results from the powder and I didn't get the appetite suppressant from the powder like I did from the oil which was really weird. So I wanted to retest that because I did it at different times of the day. Um, but I wondered the calorie, the calories are, you know, way lower. Um, the MCT amount is way lower. Um, I, like what exactly was it where that gave me the instant results with the oil versus not with the powder? Was it the, you know, the amount of MCT, which is medium chain triglycerides, which Triglycerides is a fancy word for fat. <laughs> so what kind of fat it is is what matters. So you get this crap at the store. I say crap because it is. Like there are certain brands that are selling like on the shelves at the store and they're labeling them as MCT oil and they're really just like dressed up overpriced versions of coconut oil. Anyway, the powder is better, I think, for people who don't want oil in their coffee. 
Although I recommend the oil and just make peanut butter bites or fat bombs, make candy out of them. Um, however, some people say this is easier on their stomach, the powder. See how this is flavored, salted caramel? I don't like that. I tried the salted caramel um, collagen, keto collagen, and did not like it. I don't like the flavored powders. I like it just plain where it has no flavor, no taste. So I use same company, their unflavored keto collagen. If you're interested in anything that I'm talking about here, just leave a comment because I have good discount codes. This is how much I like it. You know what's weird though? I thought they would all be the same. Like collagen is collagen, right? So it's just a matter of which one's a better price. That's what I thought. So I'm going to go with, you know, getting the one that's the cheapest. However, um, you guys know how much I love Ketology, right? I love their shakes. I love their bone broth. Their sweet like sugar is really good too. So I got their collagen protein because I'm like, this is definitely going to be the best because I love Ketology, right? It's not. Like this definitely is way better. But why are they different? They smell different. They look different. They feel different as far as the texture. But this one makes my coffee gross. I just, it's unflavored, but you put it in your coffee and it, it gives it a funky taste and almost salty or I don't know. It changes the color of my coffee too. This doesn't. You know, it's just, um, it really truly has no taste and no flavor. So I thought they would be the same, or I at least thought I would love Ketology better because I love Dr. Tracy and I love Ketology products. Um, but they're just not all the same. And that's the kind of stuff, you know, that's good to know. But um, anyway, my hair feels so much better. Ever, when it, I, You notice that I haven't been posting pictures of myself lately or mostly like not my face. Um, I just, it was, I had got to the point when I got sick in February after all those medications that every time, like I could just run my fingers through my hair and I would have a handful of hair fall out every time. And it was just getting <clears throat> worse and worse. It was just like falling out constantly. Um, so it's finally filling back in. I've got some new growth and things like that, which has been really nice. Um, but I've been using the collagen in my coffee, uh, for, I guess it's my fourth week now. And I definitely tell a difference. Like my nails, they're good, you know, for like, and they were starting to split where I got sick. This is a big thing about gut health. Like I'm doing a lot of research about that right now because it affects everything. It affects, you know, the way you look, the way you feel, your mood, the, you know, depression, exhaustion, like all kinds of stuff. So that's just kind of something I'm in the middle of, but Anyway, I wanted to bring up that topic about why I don't, you know, jump on the bandwagon, so to speak, with, you know, organic or certified or grass-fed or whatever. I mean, I like higher quality stuff when I can get it, like I said, but um, I don't necessarily think that everything is how it's labeled or, you know, that anything's as clean as we really think it is. And, um, but I do, I do like... You know, like I said, I went out recently to a local place for a bunless burger specifically because I thought it was cool that they served um, from a local farm. You know, their beef was from a local farm. So that's cool when you can do it, you know, and stuff. I like that. But I don't, it's not something that I necessarily, like, make it my life's mission. <laughs> yeah. Like I said before, I pretty much feel like every morning when I wake up and take my first breath, you know, I'm polluted, <laughs> like everything left on this planet kind of thing. So I just can't be that uptight about food, about anything in life. You know, if you get that, um, you know, you go that far with things or whatever where, you know, you worry about every little thing, then it just, I don't know, it's, I think it's a real source of stress. But So just wanted to, mostly I wanted to come on and, and catch up and chat for a minute and say, you guys have been so awesome lately, and I wanted to say thank you for that, and um, just see if you had any questions or anything, and like I said at the beginning, you may have missed it if, you know, if you popped in late or whatever, 
if you ever have any questions that you're, you know, that are too personal or you're not sure if you want to have it addressed like in front of everybody else or you're afraid people will judge you or something like that. So for, you know, or if, if you have any questions about products you don't like and maybe you don't want to say that publicly or something like that, feel free to message me. You can do that right here on my page. I read all of my own messages um, and respond as quickly as I can. We were talking about that. Um, someone else and I were talking about that. Like, what do you do with products when you've paid for them and then you don't like them? <clears throat> so there are, for example, I have friends that love the Kiss My Keto bars. I don't like them and Aaron doesn't like them. Um, but I had friends that did like them and I'll be seeing them soon at a meetup. So I'll just take these and, and give them away, which is, you know, not a big deal. However, um, other ideas, let's say for example, these bars are sweeter than I normally like. However, I, for some reason I really like these, but ideas, uh, we were talking about this, somebody and I were talking about this in a private message and she said, I just really don't like them as much as I thought I would. I said, a good idea then is to chop them up. Like, have you ever chopped up a bar and used it in a recipe? Cause that's fun. Um, but like you can chop these up into little bitty bits and use them in your, like make almond butter, um, uh, fat bombs, like I was talking about. And that really tones down. Like if it's too sweet for you, like overly sweet, that really tones it down. Another thing is to chop them up into little bitty bits and, uh, put them and mix them with salted macadamia nuts. So you have a sweet and salty and put them on your granola with some blueberries you know, so getting creative with things to make them more palatable for you personally, I think is a really good idea. Um, the other thing too, like I have this entire jug of collagen. Now you can maybe not see that I have used it down to here because I'm like, surely I just have a funny taste in my mouth this morning, right? Like it's not really, there can't be a difference between, I and mean, collagen is collagen. I would think. But anyway, there is a difference. So I've been using it and been kind of trying to make myself use it in my coffee. But every time I do, I'm drinking my coffee. I'm going, <sighs> <sighs> I don't like it. So I don't like it in my coffee. However, collagen, um, it dissolves in anything. So you could mix it into um, any liquid. So I could, you know, again, I could warm up and melt peanut butter and stir this into it and put, put it in my fat bombs. Um, the other thing too, is this would actually not have a funny flavor in broth. So if I were drinking, you know, a cup of chicken broth, this would be fine in that the flavor wouldn't it mess up chicken broth. Like it messes up my coffee. I don't know if that answered your question, Joyce, about the difference between MCT oil and in MCT powder. For the most part, you're getting less MCT per serving in the powder and so and also the powder comes out to cost more per serving so you're getting um, less quality less MCT less value higher price um, but some people find that it's easier on their stomach for some reason I'm not sure why it may have to do with the um, fiber that it's that they use as the binder to turn it into a powder <clears throat> I don't have any problem with the MCT oil with my stomach, but they say you're meant to start with just one teaspoon and work your way up. How many of you tried this wine, by the way? Palo 61. If you didn't read my review of that, um, just type wine, keto wine. It's two carbs for the entire bottle. And it's good. It's actually pretty good. Um, anyway, so... Uh, if you didn't read my post and you're interested in that, just type keto wine. But I'm curious how many of you ordered it and tried it. Did anybody, you know, like it or not like it or what? And I like, I like that we can talk openly about this stuff. Like I like that I can say, I don't like these bars or this collagen tastes funky and this one is good. Or, um, I love these, this chocolate, but it's way too expensive, you know, for normal, normal folks. Like I think when it's on sale, that's you know, the time to get it if you really want it. Um, 
that was the same thing with the these nut butter packets. I went to reorder these because I've been eating them like crazy. I'll stick them in the freezer sometimes on a hot afternoon and then eat them cold. Or I just eat them straight out of the pack at my desk. They're so convenient. So I got halfway through my second box and um, and I went to reorder them. And I was like, you know, like you hesitate because they're expensive. And um, so I ended up just ordering two jars of the nut butter. Um, but anyways, these went on sale. I think the sale's ending any minute now. It might have just ended like 10 minutes ago. So they're not on sale anymore. But what I'm saying is if you wait for the discount or you wait for the flash sales or wait for the holiday sales or whatever, you can get such better deals. And that's why I always try to let you guys know, you know, hey, this is on sale, you know, for this amount of time. And I don't always catch it in time. Sometimes I only catch it the day of. Um, and sometimes, you know, I, I barely catch it. <laughs> like, But I try to keep my eyes peeled on the emails they send out or on their Instagram accounts or, you know, if they're running some kind of a deal or a special and share it with you guys because that way, you know, like should never have to pay full price. Um, so that's it. I mostly just wanted to share what I'm eating today, what I had, you know, to eat today, and also why I'm eating so simple and what I'm, you know, researching to do about that. The collagen and the MCT oil are both really, really good for gut health. So that's, you know, why I incorporated those into my diet. Um, I'm having, usually having a full serving of collagen every day in my coffee and two full tablespoons of MCT oil in a different coffee, not the same coffee. And um, so I'm, I'm doing that as kind of a daily regimen and seeing how things go. For now, I'm having to avoid green vegetables. That seems to be my trigger as far as um, what's bothering me. Not to say that I'm going full on carnivore on you or anything like that, although I did love that big juicy ribeye. That was so good. Um, but I still eat, you know, like things like this, like plain nut butter, um, you know, the scrambled eggs, these keto bars or whatever. I like these. Don't bother my stomach at all. So that's, you know, one of the reasons that I've been eating those more lately just so you know. And the reason I haven't been sharing my food diaries is because you would get pretty bored with, I had MCT oil coffee, a collagen coffee, I had three cheesy eggs, and I had 60 grams of pecans, like, um, or whatever. And you know, that is, it's, I, and two, I've been on repeat, like meal repeat. So I had that bunless bacon cheeseburger from Hardee's, that big, beautiful, you know, like double cheeseburger or whatever. I had that like two times in a row and then um, the same hamburger steak topped with bacon and cheese I, with the same side item or whatever. I had it like two times in a row and it gets boring, I think. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments or you're interested in learning more about anything that we're, you know, talking about here or anything else really, just leave a comment. I love hearing what's going on with you guys. I like hearing what your questions are. I like hearing what you're struggling with, um, anything that interests you. I think this whole journey, you know, has been fascinating. I've been eating keto for over eight years. It was eight years in February. And it's interesting, like all the things I've been through, overcoming eating disorders, you know, the whole, you know, dealing with the weight loss mindset issues. Then there have been, you know, various health issues I've had to deal with or what have you. So um, I think that it's all, it's all very interesting to me, like how it all works together. So having gut health issues, for example, one of the worst things you can do is add sugar. You know, so that, mess, that will feed any kind of bacteria in your gut. So you could have like yeast or bacteria or something like that from taking antibiotics or from eating a lot of processed foods or whatever. And when you eat sugar, it feeds that bacteria. So then you have more of it instead of the good bacteria. But, you know, I was talking to my doctor about this and I said, well, you know, doc, I already eat sugar-free. <laughs> like what else can I do? <laughs> oh, so I'm on the mission. I'm on the, I'm on the path to you know, figuring out the absolute best solutions um, for that. And I know that over time, you know, your your body will heal itself, you know, and your guts will, you know, like everything will like resolve itself over time. But in the meantime, that's not any fun. I don't know if you've ever, you know, experienced that where, you know, your digestive system was just completely out of whack or whatever, and um, it's miserable. It affects every part of your life. 
you know, like, so anyway, um, leave me a question or comment. I'll come back and um, make sure and give you the links to the summit that's coming up. It's going to be a really, really good one. Like we had a really good one last year and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right this minute. It's been such a long day. But there was a really, really good one last year that was free, too, that you could watch from home. And this one's going to be at, at least as good, I think. So I'll get you guys the link to that. Anyway, it has been a long day, so I'm going to wind down for the night. I just wanted to hop on and say, hey, um, just make sure we kind of had a minute to, you know, jazz a little bit and uh, have a personal connection and such. I feel like I've been working entirely too much and not having an opportunity to um, catch up and answer questions and, and be more personable or what have you. So I want to let you guys know how much I appreciate you, your support. Every like really counts, really helps a lot. Um, like just, I know it may not seem like it cause it's, you know, just kind of, might seem like a small thing, but you know, when you ask a question, there are at least 10 other people who were scared to ask that question you know, or thought maybe it's a dumb question or just didn't do it, that will appreciate the fact that you asked it so that they get to know the answer too. Or there might be other people who, who didn't think to ask that question but would be interested in the answer, you know, things like that. Like just every time you interact or engage with this community, it benefits everybody else. Um, there are a lot of people who just read and don't, you know, respond or don't comment, but they want the information too. Stuff I might not think, you know, to address. Like, for example, when Joyce asked the difference between MCT oil and MCT powder, I had that same question. And um, I was, it was in, interesting to me that I didn't get the same results from the two because I expected I should or would. Um, but, you know, that that's not something I thought to even bring up or whatever. So it was good that you did. Anyway, we're all in this together. Um, I know that I'm going to get, I'm going to get teared up, I think, but I know that I could not have made it this far. I couldn't, um, have achieved what I have with my health and with my weight loss or overcome the eating disorders I've been through, um, or whatever without you guys. And that may seem like, I know I'm getting emotional, but, um, I, I it's, my life is very isolated and very quiet. You know, a lot of times I'm traveling alone, I live alone, my children are grown or what have you. Um, and you guys have held me accountable. You guys have been so supportive and understanding. There were times that I just was so frustrated or um, having such a hard time and, and going through difficult things and you were always there. And uh, I can't tell you how much that means to me, and I think I felt this certain sense of obligation and accountability to you that even when you, you know, maybe were taking a break or you weren't even commenting, I still felt like you were out there <laughs> or you were going to be out there or, you know, whatever, and I felt this sense of obligation to see it through and to not let you down and not let myself down, and so you really encouraged um, and, and supported me into you know, pushing myself past some barriers that I may not have otherwise. So I think us having such a good, strong community, you know, and all being in this together is, is helpful for all of us, you know. There are some of you that have been super active and have been around for a while. I notice when you go missing. I don't necessarily say anything. Sometimes I want to, you know, reach out and send a message and say, hey, how are things going? But I don't want it to feel like pressure or whatever. But don't think I don't notice. <laughs> All right. So I uh, hope you have a good rest of the day or night. Leave a comment. Let's continue this conversation online. And I will see you back there. And I'll um, get those links to you for the summit and stuff.